Hey guys, today we are going to look at the top 100 most expensive commons. And the beauty of commons, in my opinion, has been if you are able to go flea market hunting or buy a collection in bulk, especially of these older sets, you find one of them, it's likely you're going to find a bunch of them. Because if someone didn't pick the one or two Ristic Studies or Manamorphosis, that means they have not valued a card at all. And yeah, you do have commons at $17 and $14 a piece, which is really, really good. So some other commons that are very expensive are EDH commons. And they're not really commons because, I mean, they're common in the fact that they're found in every EDH pre-con deck. But that's like the only way you can get them. So that's why they're kind of commons, but kind of not because the rarity, they're actually quite rare in nature. You're not going to find them very often unless you're buying a collection that includes a pre-con deck. So other commons that have been surprising, um, I would say, are the tutor commons. Uh, uncommons are full of tutor abilities. But when you see a merchant scroll or something like that, yeah, that's going to be valuable. Even commons that were reprinted like Utopia uh, from Dissension, reprinted in, I believe, hmm, I, I don't, it's not Modern Horizons because that's a reprint. I believe Masters 25 is where it was reprinted, still keeps up its price point, which is really, really great on a card like that, even after reprint. Sleight of hand, you're going to look at cards over and over again. It's much more likely for a, a common to be reprinted than uncommon of high value. Uh, you do have some exceptions of uncommons. Uh, Manamorphosis, for instance, was an uncommon, was a common reprinted as an uncommon. So you do have some mix, but generally speaking, commons are reprinted heavier especially if they are reprinted as commons and that will destroy its value an uncommon reprinted as an uncommon i mean its value is not going to be great but it won't have its value slashed like in half or by 90 percent like a lot of these commons would have so you have good cards priest of titania you can see there is a tribal element crop rotation again a tutor ability for land um asperin is kind of what I'm talking about. Yes, it got reprinted in, I believe, Masters 25. and But it's still very, very difficult to get your hand, hands on one of them just because it wasn't printed in a standard set. Lightning Bolt, you're always going to find Lightning Bolts in a collection because it's one of the most common cards in Magic the Gathering. And it would be very strange if you bought a collection and they didn't really pick it. Even if they picked it, they probably wouldn't pick Lightning Bolt or Counterspell. Counterspell is about a dollar. And those two are always going to come together because they came from the same sets. Uh, Urza, the Power Plant, the Mine, and the Tower. Uh, these, if you find one of them, it's likely you will find the other two. And it's very likely you're going to find a bunch of them. Uh, when I bought a collection recently, it came with a hundred or so odd versions of each of them yeah i mean if you go to your local game store or your flea market and you look at the common section it's a really good value for your time so if you say oh instead of going to a movie i will go look at bulk and that's what you enjoy doing uh, you save the money that you would be spending on the movie and you could pick up a few dollars and i think a lot of these cards will hold value because there's popper so unlike the uncommons, the uncommons are, I mean, there's obviously more valuable uncommons because they're rare and so supply is much lower, but they don't have a format specifically designed for them when the commons have a format for popper. And a lot of these common prices are, I think, very stable. I, I don't see them ever going down in price too much, even after they're reprinted, if they're a popper staple. Because you probably need four of them. Um, other cards that are really, really expensive that were not a few years ago was the, the Black Shadowborn Apostle. I remember that card was five to ten cents, 
and then it got featured in a commander what uh by jimmy wong and friends and then suddenly it became two dollars overnight because people like oh hey i want to play that deck just like relentless rats and i mean it should have been so obvious it's another relentless rats but in my opinion it's a lot weaker and it doesn't doesn't seem like that strong of a card, but obviously it's very good in multiples. So Pilla Pala and cards like that. Um, Dragons. Oh, what is that? Dragons Garp? Huh. That's a new one. I have not seen that one before. And honestly, I'm kind of curious because I have a lot of cards in that set. Uh, I have a lot of cards in that set. And even like me looking at some of these cards... It's not a, a, a dreams grip, okay? Oh, it's a t it's kind of like a twiddle effect. All right, there we go. But yeah, even me yeah, being really into bulk picking and buying collections. So I used to go to flea markets to buy bulk, but it's like it, during the summertime, it's really really hot. Like I should try to go to a flea market sometime uh, today, Sunday. Maybe I'll head out to the. Hispanic flea market that I love. Uh, it's called La Esterella. Uh, the food is really good too. And there's like a creative artwork that they make. And it's like on par to like what I would buy. Pictures of tigers and jaguars and things like that, which I would never... Uh, I'll buy it and then I'll put it in a closet. But um, oh, that's where I bought my picture of the tiger thing for like a way too much money um, now that I think about it. But nonetheless, it was made by a 13-year-old. So, uh, Lightning Bolt, Oakenwood, uh, a lot of the core, the new core, I mean, it's kind of weird, but Land is always good. Jugabog has been reprinted several times, it looks like, and it's still quite valuable. Street Wraith as common. Um, if it had not been reprinted again, it's an uncommon. I looking, That was like a $10 card. Uh, even reprinted in Modern Masters 1, it was still like a $10 card, which is fantastic if you think about a common being $10 in a set that so MSRP was six ninety nine when it came out. Yeah, uh, it's overall, it's pretty interesting when you take a look at Magic's history and you see what cards are valuable and what cards are not valuable. You do have a general consensus that uh, for popper format, the cards that are going to be played in Popper will be played as four ofs because you typically don't have legendaries. You don't have any restriction on how many you can play. And I love I love the Ponder. I love that lore when Ponder. I think the older cards, even after reprinted, if they're reprinted with a different artwork and the old card has decent artwork, it will retain its price quite well. So, yes, yeah, Light of Hands, always a good card. These... If you find one of them, you're going to find a bunch. And that makes... Oh, back to the flea market story. So I've just ended up buying and gambling on collections and then on watching some Netflix. It's really enjoyable. Um, as long as you don't do it for like a living. Like you do it for fun like as a hobby. You can buy like a $20 collection of magic cards. It's a few thousand magic cards. And then you will just watch Netflix and kind of look for about $20 worth of cards. Uh, typically, you might break even. Uh, I have never not broken even, but there are times that, like, when you break even, you're breaking even at retail. So, is it really breaking even, or did you actually lose money? But if you view it as, hey, instead of um, going to the movies or Dave, like when we go to Dave and Buster's, we spend like at least fifty, sixty dollars a person because we just, you know, there's food and then there's games. If you just buy a fifty to sixty dollar bulk collection, and it will provide you know as much entertainment in terms of length, if not more, you might hit a gem. Maybe not. Um, I mean, I remember one bulk collection on YouTube where the guy was complaining, and he he had like what was it, like twenty five copies of Mary's Guild, and Mary's Guild was something like twenty dollars today. And he also had like 200 ponders and he just buy listed it all. And I was like, okay, no, keep them. Uh, I would love to get 200 ponders. You know, that's just so crazy to me. 200 lore when ponders. That's so crazy to me that that can happen. And you never know. I mean, I, I have collections come in and they're always quite um, every, and that's the beauty of it. Every collection is different. 
and it's fun. Uh, it really is fun going through. So these are all the cards over $2 as commons. You hit one of them, I guarantee you, like a Crimson Wisp, I guarantee you have a bunch of those cards. And it's like in bulk. And the beauty is, once you're done sorting bulk one time, cards can spike and you're like, hey, I saw that card. And then you can sort the bulk again <laughs> for no money. Just a uh, cost of your time, right? Anyway, that's it, guys. Hopefully you guys find really good cards too. Bye.